Would you turn to Luke this uh, evening? And if you didn't bring a Bible with you, hold up your hand. If we have extra Bibles, we'd be glad to let you use one of ours. Hold up your hand till the ushers see you. And uh, turn in the, in the Bible to Luke, the fifth chapter. Let your eyes rest on the words. Say it out loud again, God's my source. My eyes are on Him, not on man. And I will receive what I need. Not everybody said that. Uh, I'm not just trying to fill up the time. Everybody awake? Are you with me? Huh? I don't know if I want to say it. Why not? Why not? Uh, hmm, I won't say that. But I know why not, but I'm not going to tell you right now. Uh, but if you'd like to, let's, let's say it again. Everybody say, God is my source. Lord, my eyes are on you. Not on man. I believe. I will receive, I will receive what, I what I need tonight. tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. From who? God. Because your eyes are on, on Him. He's our source. He's our everything. In Luke, the fifth chapter, for some time now, we have been on this subject called God's Will to Heal. Do you like it? I do. God's will to heal. Now you need to know the answer to the question, is it God's will for me to be healed? And if if you're not sure, then you cannot have faith to be healed. Are you with me now? If you're still wondering and wavering about is it God's will for me to be healed or not? You can't have faith in that condition. And faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Faith is how you receive your salvation, being born again, your sins forgiven, and healing, and anything else. But before you can have faith, how does faith come? By hearing. Comes by hearing. Hearing by the anointed word of the Lord. And what's going to happen while you're hearing the anointed word of the Lord? Well, you're going to find out His will, right? Right. While you're hearing what He tells you, you're going to discover His will. And once you've heard His will on the subject and His word on the subject, then you can believe it. You can be persuaded of it. Hmm? And it's that faith that will get you the roughest Uh, through the roughest and toughest places in life and get you through anything to be an overcomer in Him. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Now, uh, I feel it necessary to say just a little bit more about this. Um, I had the privilege of working in a healing school at Brother Kenneth Hagin's ministry for a number of years. And uh, I told some of our folks one time, I said, I think uh, some people would like it better if we had a healing drive through <laughs> that, uh, you know, they could just pull up at the window and we could just read out, reach out our hand and go, bless you, be healed. And they could say, thank you and take off. Because we live in a world where uh, things are happening real fast. And people think the way to do everything is uh, just as fast as you can. And the microwave is too slow. (laughs) Right? And we don't like to wait on our email at all. (laughs) Right? Or anything else. We want it now. Why can't I have it now? Why can't I? Of course, that feeds the flesh because that's the nature of the flesh. Your flesh doesn't want to wait for anything. And the Bible says, though, that people came to Jesus to hear him and to be healed. Have you read that? You see it in Luke 6. You see it in Luke 7. They came to what? Hear him him and be healed. And uh, 
I, I had a lady come by the healing school one time, and, and she said, I want you to lay hands on me and pray for me to be healed. And I said, well, we believe in that, and we do that. I said, but uh, let me ask you a question or two first. She said, why? She said, I have other appointments today, and I just want you to pray for me so I can be healed. I said, no. She said, what? What? Like, how dare you? Which already tells me volumes about her. She has no respect for me. No respect for the ministry. Did you hear me? I'm her servant. She, she, her, her concept is, you know, that I'm supposed to be like her little preacher who jumps when she says jump. And they change their little preachers every year or two whether they need to or not. Hmm? Well, what do you think we hired you for? Do our praying for us. Do our believing and our counseling and our visitation. Well, then you don't have a clue what church is even supposed to be. Hmm? No. If you don't respect the Lord's ministers, you don't respect Him. You don't respect His Word, you don't respect Him. You don't respect His things, you don't respect Him. I said, well, sister, you know, we do this, we practice this. I said, but uh, we don't just do it to be doing it. We do it to get results. I don't, I don't like to pray and not get results. And I've learned that you've got to do it the right way. And I said, let me ask you just a few questions. She said, well, okay. I said, well, what about this? What about? And every question she answered wrong. She hasn't a clue. I said, well, sister, I said, I don't think we're ready right now to pray. What? I said, we're about to start healing school. And uh, can you stay and get under some teaching and get your faith built up? She said, I don't have time for that. Well, she just got through telling me the doctors told her she's only got a short amount of time to live. Well, what are you do? What are you, what are you in a hurry to do? Well, we've planned to shop this afternoon with my daughters. Well, what do you do with folks like that? They don't see the value of the word. They don't understand how this works. Faith comes by what? Yes. By rushing the preacher. No. Uh-uh. Huh? Huh? Faith comes by what? Demanding that God give me some. No. no. What does it come? By hearing. It comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. Right? right? What if you need some more? And hearing and hearing. Hmm? Well, I don't have time for all that. Well, I guess you think you know better than us. Let us know if you get good results. Be the first time. No, <laughs> they that wait upon the Lord. Somebody say, wait upon the Lord. Wait somebody say, you plan on going all night tonight? I don't know. What if I do? <laughs> but the reason I'm not reading my text yet <laughs> is because we got enough folks that are in too big of a hurry Amen. and got too much of a mindset about what's supposed to happen and what I need and what you're supposed to do for me. Well, you, you can miss it like that. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Relax. Relax. And say it again. My eyes are on the Lord. I'm open to Him. I'm waiting on the Lord. Trusting in Him. Amen. Glory to God. Open. Waiting. Too many people in too big of a hurry. And that's how you miss it. That's how you miss out on it. They that wait upon the Lord, what had happened with them? Huh? Those that rush, 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 rush can get weaker and weaker. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Could you use some of that tonight? Renew their strength. Everybody, everybody, just close your eyes and lift up your hands right now and praise the Lord some. Lord, we bless you tonight. Our eyes are on you. Our ears are open unto you. Our hearts are open to you. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we worship you. 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 
We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So many folks are so used to getting their way. <laughs> when and how they say, but you know that doesn't work with the Lord. He's the boss. He's the big boss. Right? <laughs> you don't tell him how. He tells you how. Right? You don't tell him what you need. You ask him. You might say, I think I know what I need, but you tell me. <laughs> hmm? You know, some, even on the highway system. How many know sometimes you need to go south in order to go north? Hmm? There are interchanges, right? Uh, so must go up here, take such and such exit. You go, well, that'll take me south. Yeah, I know it, but that's how you got to go. Because it's going to bring you back around. But I ain't going south because I need to go north. Well, you're going to have to turn south. No, I ain't going south. I need to go north. I know which way I need to go. <laughs> well, just stay here then. <laughs> Luke 5, did you find it? Yes. Good. We all happy? Yes. We ready? ready? We open? Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> I said, why don't you hurry up and get with it? We're not waiting on me. <laughs> I was ready before I got here. <laughs> Luke 5, <laughs> verse 12. It came to pass when Jesus was in a certain city. Behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. This is the question that many, many Christians are still asking today. They're still praying this way. Now, if the Lord had responded to this and said, well, you did the right thing by asking if it was my will, because it's not always my will. And every time you pray, you should pray this way. Then maybe there'd be some confirmation for praying that way. But that's not what he said, or anything remotely like it. So then why does most of the church world still pray the way the unbeliever who not didn't know Jesus pray? When he answered his prayer and answered his question, and he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? Why don't we take his answer? His answer, Jesus' answer, instead of the leper's question to direct our praying. Some got that, some didn't. Should we base our praying on the leper's question or Jesus' answer? What did the leper ask? Lord, I know you can do it. What? If, if it's your will. If it, I know you can heal me if it be your will. And the millions of Christian ministers and people are stuck right there in the leper's question. And govern all their praying according to the leper's question. And you would think they could have just read the next verse. Right? right? And come into a whole new world. Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. Somebody say verse 13. Verse 13. Whole new world. Whole new world. What did it say? Jesus put forth his hand, touched him, and he said, I will. I will. Ooh. I can't speak for you, but... 
That settles it for me. Right? I don't care who wrote a book and who went to school and who had an experience and who had a thought and a question. I got the words of the Master. Red letters. Red letters. Red letters. Red letters letters trumps Ph.D. Red letters trumps Doctor of Literature. Doesn't it? Red letters. Red letters trump somebody's experience. Well, I saw a vision. Well, I heard a voice told me it's God's will for you to bear this sickness. Well, I got red letters, though. (laughs) Red letters trump your dream. Right? Or your experience. Jesus said, I will. Glory to God. Be thou clean. Immediately as leprosy left him. Is he the same yesterday, today, and forever? Then what's he still saying today? I will. will. Is he no respecter of persons? Does he love you just as much as he loved him or anybody else? Then wouldn't he say the same thing to you? That If he doesn't say the same thing to you as he does to him, why? Is he a respecter of persons? If he's not saying, you know, I know people that they don't, they don't mean to be saying it like this, but there's a whole lot of people that tell us, well, the age of miracles is past. All that's passed away. He's not saying that anymore. Well, say what? Who are you to tell us he's changed and he's, not, no, longer, he's no longer saying I will? I don't believe it. I believe this. I believe Jesus answered the question once and for all to people who believe his word. I will be thou healed and cleansed. Well, we've been on this subject for some weeks now, establishing from the word of God, God's will to heal. We saw it here right out of the mouth of Jesus. But we know the scripture said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And so we've been going reason by reason to give you 30 reasons, three zero, from the Bible why we are sure it's God's will for all to be healed today. We saw reason number one, God's word is medicine. Number two, a strong spirit will sustain you. Number three, the original creation. Number four, God's will in heaven. Number five, the origin of sickness and disease. Number six, sickness is a work of the devil. Number seven, we got a covenant of healing. Number eight, the eternal names of God. He still is. I am. Number nine, sickness is a curse. Right? Number ten, uh, the types of redemption. Number eleven, redemption itself by his stripes. You were healed. Number twelve, first fruits of our inheritance, actually of the resurrection. Number thirteen, the fatherhood of God. Number fourteen, the children's bread. And number 15, the mercy of God. Aren't you glad for the mercy of God? Well, that's halfway to 30, isn't it? Can you make it the rest of the way? Hmm? Okay. Turn, if you would, to... Uh, Let's see, Luke, the ninth chapter, I believe it is. You were there in Luke 5. Just turn right on over to Luke 9. Luke 9, verse 1 and 2. Jesus called his 12 disciples together, and he gave them power and authority over all devils or demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. We're sure, number 16, we're sure it's God's will for all to be healed today because of authority over demons, and over disease. Authority over demons and disease. 
Ready to get excited about this tonight? Jesus gave them power and authority. We're going to talk about the authority side of it tonight. Authority to do what? Over demons and authority to cure diseases. And he sent them, he told them, you go preach the kingdom of God and you go heal the sick. Now this sounds strange to us. You go heal the sick. Did he tell them to go preach? Come on, don't get hung up with me. Now read the Bible. Read the Bible. He sent them to do what? And to heal the sick. Who to heal the sick? Them. To heal the sick. Well, how are they going to do that? They're just human beings like you and me. How are they going to do that? Well, they're going to do it the same way he did it. Because he's operating as a human being. He's not operating as God, although he is. The Bible tells us he emptied himself. He laid aside his mighty weight and glory and power. And and, and performed no miracles until he was baptized in the river. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in a bodily shape and form as a dove. And he came out in the power of the Spirit, and you begin to see miracles. Well, see, if he's just doing these as God, he could have done them when he was five years old, right? Or 10 or 12. Somebody said, well, you know, he did. No, he didn't. Somebody said, well, there are apocryphal writings that said he did. I know it. Some of them's got him healing his little friends while they played and raising a little bird from the dead. Don't you believe it? I said, don't you believe it? Well, he's God, he could, he is God, but no, he couldn't operating as a man. He emptied himself, and the Bible tells us, the Scripture tells us, the first miracle was the turning of water into wine at the wedding of Canaan, right? So we got to believe that, and that didn't happen till after the Holy Ghost came on him and anointed him. Why? Because he's not doing it as God. He's doing it as a man. Now, we know that's got to be true because when he tells us in John 14, he said, those that believe on me in my name, the works that I do, they will do also. And greater works than these shall they do. How in the world could we do it if he did it as God? And we're not God. Impossible. But if he did it as a man, anointed with the Holy Spirit, And he would authorize us with the same authority and anoint us with the same spirit. Then we can see the glorious possibility, hallelujah, of us doing the very same type of things that he did. And that's why he came and demonstrated it, to show us how to do it. Oh, but for centuries, the church has sat back and put Jesus' ministry on a pedestal that cannot be attained by any mortal human on the planet and just say, ooh and ah, and, and he could do that, but you're not. You're just a worm. He's the son of God. How dare you think you could do something like that? Listen to me. As a person, as our sacrifice for sin, Jesus is in a class by himself. Did you hear me? Nobody else could pay the price for our sin. Nobody else could do what he did in obtaining our redemption. But in his ministry, his teaching, his preaching, his ministering to the sick, the miracles that happened, he did them as an example for us to follow and told us to do the same. Church has not believed that. Christians have not believed that at all. I think I need to read that scripture. Some folk are looking at me funny. Remember the Bible? John. Hold your place there in Luke. John 14. I quoted it, but let's look at it. You know, if you don't know this, the enemy will rob you. Every good, every victory, every miracle, every healing, every deliverance you read in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, you read it and get excited about it, and the devil will come and say, yeah, but that was Jesus. That was Jesus. He could do that because he's the son of God. But don't you think you can? And that's not what the Lord did it for. He demonstrated to us 
how to walk in authority, how to walk in power. And he got it back. And he gave it to us. He gave it to the 12. He gave it to the 70. And you see it continue in the book of Acts after he's in heaven. Isn't that right? You see the same kind of thing. Why? And the book of Acts is still being written. The Acts of the church, the Acts of the Holy Ghost of the church, still being written. It's not done. Somebody talk about the early church and the latter church like it's two different churches. We're part of the same church. Part of the same church. Did you find John? 14? 10? Believest thou not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? The words I speak to you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the works. See, Jesus didn't take credit for the works that happened through him. Did he? He never said, I did it. He said, the Father in me. Obviously, he's operating as a man. Believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily. Now, when the Lord says verily, verily, why would he say that? Why would he say that? Should, when we hear that, should we become all ears? Should we realize he is saying something that is an everlasting truth, and he's endeavoring to impress it upon us? Elsewise, he'd have just said it. If he just said it, it's true forever. But if he says, listen to me now, verily, verily, this is a truth, an everlasting truth. What, what's an everlasting truth? He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Do we believe it or not? Do we believe it or not? You see, people think they're honoring and respecting Jesus. And they're doing just the opposite. Hmm? If you respect Jesus, you need to respect what he said right here. Yes. Right? Yes, but people think, oh, oh, now, now, Jesus could do that. Jesus could do that. He could speak to the wind and the waves. He could cast out demons. He could minister to the sick. But, but he's Jesus. He's Jesus. And you're not. Well, we already knew that. <laughs> but they're trying. They, they think, I have more respect for Jesus because I'm not going to bring him down. On, on a human level, he's the one that brought himself down to the human level and became a man and operated as a man, showing us how it could be done. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We need to believe what he said. Yes, sir. Don't we? Yes. He that believes on me, the works I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Somebody say, I believe that. I believe that. Now that applies to us, anybody that believes on him. Now we see an example of it with the 12 and the 70. So go back to Luke. Go back to Luke, please, the ninth chapter. Let's remind ourselves. We're sure it's God's will for all of us to be healed. Why? He has given us authority over demons and over disease. Well, if we've got authority over them, they ought not be run, running roughshod over us. Who's got authority over who? Well, according to the Bible, we got authority over them. You never read anywhere where the Bible tells us to be patient. Because the Lord has temporarily given demons and disease authority over us. Or anything like it. He gave them power and authority over all demons. Even the great, big, ugly, hairy ones. <laughs> and to cure diseases. Can you say hallelujah? Can you say glory to God? Hold your place here. Go back to Matthew, the 10th chapter. It's said just a little bit different in the, uh, this is the same happening. It's just Matthew's account of what we're reading in Luke. Matthew 10. Matthew 10 and 1. 
10.1, when he called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power. Now, if you look it up, that is the word for authority. And it can be a little bit confusing because in the King James are used interchangeably and there's a different word for power. Dunamis. It's a word we, you know, we get our word dynamite from. Power. We're talking about explosive strength, might. But this is another word. Uh, exousia, exousia, depending on which Greek scholar you read after. And, and, and never argue uh, about pronunciation of some of these things. Scholars who spend their whole life disagree. And particularly some of the Hebrew words, we have added vowels to them to make them pronounceable to, to us. And uh, besides that, it's not can you pronounce it right? Do you know what it means? <laughs> you can pronounce it perfectly and not believe it. But there's a word for power, and there's a word for authority. Tonight we're talking about authority. We got the power in the Holy Spirit. He's the powerhouse. He is the greater one. He's the one who was hovering over the face of the deep. And when God spoke the word, whoo, he manifested power to create planets. And he lives in you and me. But you know, you can have power without authority in the earth. I mean, you might have a tank. And you got power. But that don't mean you got the right to drive it down the street and blow up my house. Do you? You got no authority to be riding down the street shooting it. You'll find out real quick the people that do have authority are going to come get you. You might say, I got the power. I got the power. Yeah, but we got the authority and some power. And you, they're going to shut you down. You need both. But you got to have the authority to use the power. And we do. He gave them, he gave us both. You read that in Luke, didn't you? Power and authority. Now here when he says power, it actually is the word for authority in, in Matthew 10. He gave them authority against unclean spirits to do what with them? Cast them out. And to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. If you put them both together, Luke said all demons. Matthew said all sickness and all disease. All means what? Everything included, nothing excluded. Does that mean there is no demon uh, that, that exists that we don't have power over? There is no disease that we don't have authority over. We have power and authority over all demons. We have power and authority over all sickness, over all disease. We need to say that. We need to think that. We need to get that built into our consciousness. I know having the privilege of working in healing school for year after year. We'd have a day where we'd minister to people in a special way, and I'd spend extra time waiting on the Lord and getting quiet. And the Lord led me to these verses, these very ones, Matthew 10, Luke 9, and he led me to get in there and get quiet and not just wear myself out uh, praying at the top of my lungs, but to, to get, get in there and get quiet and just begin to say, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he's anointed me. Now see, in a few minutes, I'm going to go out there and, and minister to people and lay hands on people and take authority over disease and that kind of thing. I need to believe it. Amen. Right? How does faith come? Amen. Come well when I'm saying and I'm hearing it too. Amen. Right? And I'd lay there sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes an hour at a time and just say, the Spirit of the Lord's on me because he's anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He's anointed me. I'd say that part of the time, and I'd say this the other part of the time. He's given me power and authority over all demons and all disease. And I'd say it again. He's given me power and authority 
over all demons yes. and all disease. Say it out loud with me. He's given me power and authority over all demons and over all disease. Now you hear that and your head says, I got it, I heard that. But that, faith is not of the head. Faith is not of the intellect. That's why I'd lay there for another 45 minutes and keep saying it and keep saying it and keep saying it. And there was some time, I mean time after time, the Spirit of God had come into that little room and I'm telling you, the glory of God would be so strong when I'd come out of there, I'm just, I'm looking for something to rebuke. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> it's the difference between somebody coming up and saying, I've got terminal cancer and you're going, ooh, everybody stand up and pray hard. Well, that means we're intimidated by it. Did you hear me? We're scared of it. And I says, well, it, it's something to be scared of. No, not if we have authority and power over it. We don't have to be afraid of it. It has to obey us. Most of the church does not believe this. And most of the church does not see the kind of miracles that you read about in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John either. Most of the church still believes it might be God's will for me to die from this terminal disease. God might be teaching me something. No, never mind they can't find it in the Bible. People have made the word of God of none effect by their traditions. They have refused the word in order to keep and hold on to a tradition. Friend, when you get adamant about something you think and say you believe, check yourself. Why do you believe it? Where is it at? Where is it in the book? Not just half a verse, in, in two or three witnesses, f multiple verses. Where is it? Where is it? Well, we're on reason number 16, right? And we're reading verse after verse. It is His will. It is His will. Why would He give us authority and power over demons if it might be His will for them to rule over us? Why would He give us authority and power if it might be His will for the disease to rule over us? Hmm? It's like putting you out in the wild with a grizzly bear and putting, you know, a, ma a huge magnum rifle in your hands and going, now, I'm giving you this rifle, but don't use it. It might be God's will for the bear to kill you. So why'd you give me the gun? Just wanted you to have it. Make you feel a little better. While you get mauled. I'm going to use the gun. <laughs> Big bear starts coming down on me, and I'm not going to wait till he gets to my nose either. Uh, right? Why did God give us the authority? Why did he give us the power so disease could rule over us and destroy our life, so demons could make us miserable and destroy us? No. No. So we could do what he did while he walked the earth. He rebuked them. He bound them. He shut them down. He ran them out. Right? Didn't he do it? Yes, he did. Turn to Mark, the first chapter, please. Mark 1. Now, you start talking about some of these things, and some people get nervous. A lot of folk don't even like to talk about demons at all. And, of course, it's the, it's the devil's favorite thing, that you just pretend that there is no devil. His favorite thing is that you just, you know, there are no demons, there, there's no devil. If he can't get you to believe that, he wants you to be afraid of it, mortified, terrified. And you see, most of the church are getting one ditch or the other. Hmm? They either get in the ditch over here and pretend there is no devil. And there are no demons. Ooh, ooh, don't talk about that. Ooh, ooh, no. I don't like talking about that. Don't talk about that. Or they get out of that ditch, go across the middle of the road, into the ditch on the other side, and everything's a devil. And it's all fear. Oh, there's a devil behind every bush. There's a devil, there's a devil. Oh, you're a devil. 
Ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's the devil, the devil. Everything's a devil. And you, know, you can know it's wrong when it is fear. The Lord didn't tell us these things to be afraid of the devil. He gave us these things to have dominion and authority and victory. And when the devil started doing stuff, to shut it down. Shut it down. In Mark 1. Mark 1. Down in verse uh, twenty. Two, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, verse 21, and he taught. And they were astonished. Astonished is a strong word. And if you look it up to define it, it gets even stronger than what we think. They were absolutely amazed, awestruck at his doctrine. Why? Why? Not, not for the reasons you might think. He, because he taught them how. Hmm? Well, and as we cover point number 23, it would be good to remember that Dr. So-and-so has this position. But of course, other Dr. So-and-so has his position. And perhaps there is a happy medium between the two. And you just decide whatever it is you think uh, it means and should be because we all have a right to believe whatever we think is best. That ain't how Jesus taught at all. You know how he taught? Huh? Like a lion. <laughs> he said, God said this. And this is what it is. And there ain't no other way. Huh? And the people went. They said, Boy, the rabbis don't teach like that. Woo. <laughs> he ain't talking theories. Hmm? He taught with what? Authority. Authority. This is one of the, I don't know, the things that marks his whole ministry. Authority. Authority in his teaching, in his actions, in his operations. Now, lest you start down the wrong path, you might say, well, Brother Keith is Jesus. He's operating as a man. As a man. Don't take my word for it. Study it out. Study it. Study it in Hebrew. Study it in Romans. Study it in Philippians. Study it in the Gospels. Jesus emptied himself and showed us how to do it. Verse 23. Verse 22, he taught them as authority, not like the scribes had been teaching. There was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. And he said, Lord, let us alone. What have we to do with you? You Jesus of Nazareth, are you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus said, ooh, <laughs> did y'all hear that? It's a devil. <laughs> oh, intercessors pray. Oh, 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 everybody pray, pray, pray. Oh, what are we going to do with this devil? Oh, oh, oh. No! No! No. Do you know why I say that? Because people are doing this. That's right. They are doing this. That is right. And they don't realize they're actually yielding to the enemy. Because the environment he thrives in is fear. Fear. You and I are to have no fear at all. None. None. And when it comes to dealing with devils, we should do it the way Jesus did it. Exactly. Nobody's found a better way. Hmm? It has not changed with the times. Very simply, you'll see Jesus again and again. Two basic things. He said, shut up, come out, and they did, and that was it, and they went to the next part. Now, maybe you think you know better. 
Well, Brother Keith, sometimes you just have to. It's warfare. It's warfare. Now, the warfare is between your ears, brother and sister. That's more scriptural than you think. That's 2 Corinthians 10. No. If you had to overcome the devil, it ain't going to work. You're no match for him in your flesh or your mind. But it's not in your strength. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit doesn't wrestle with the devil at all. They don't tie up. They don't go nine rounds. Did you hear me? Oh, the devil wants you to think that, but it never happens. Never. When you resist the devil, he stays till he gets ready to go. No, he flees, flee, flee. Why? Because when you really do it right, he runs up against the power of the Holy Ghost, and ain't nothing he can do with that. Nothing. So his only choice is to get out. That's it. He's got to go. Jesus made a statement one time. They accused him of casting out devils by Beelzebub. And one of the writings of the gospel accounts, he said, if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, the kingdom's God to come, kingdom of God has come to you. In another place, he said, if I cast out devils by the finger of God. He's casting out devils by the finger of God. You read the scriptures, you'll see it talks about the hand of God. That's more power than finger talks about the arm of God. God flexed his arm when he raised Jesus from the dead. Uh, We, oh my, that's another message in itself. I mean, the Bible said he demonstrated the exceeding greatness of his power. He wrought it when he raised Christ from the dead. Somebody said, well, I thought he had raised Lazarus from the dead. Why was this? Oh, completely different thing. He didn't just raise him, his, his body from the dead. When he raised Jesus from the dead, he also raised all of us from the dead. Anybody that has ever lived or will ever live that believes on him free from all of our sins and death over all believing humanity. It is no wonder the ground shook. I believe hell shook. God, God did this. He raised Jesus up out of death when God rolls up his sleeve, brother. And he did when he raised Jesus from the dead because he also raised all of us. But when Jesus was dealing with demons that were causing problems, the Bible said he did it by the finger. Jesus said, shut up and come out. And the Holy Ghost went. We need to get this picture in us that this is how much greater our God is than any work of the devil. The devil wants to try to get you to believe he's some kind of an equal opposite to God. He's nowhere in the vicinity of that. He's a created being. And he's fallen and stripped and defeated. Oh, no. The only way he can function is when people don't resist him. When they believe his lies. When they yield to him, when any child of God stands up in the power of the Spirit, in the authority, in the name of Jesus, and resists him, he has one option. Flee. If you say, well, I just don't know about that. Well, until you know, it won't happen with you. It happens by faith. Faith gives you confidence. Can you say amen? Amen. He rebuked him, verse 25. He rebuked him. Somebody say rebuked him. Rebuked him. And said, hold your peace. We might say, shut up. And come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. 
And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commands he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. Glory to God. Now, if you read carefully Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, you know this is not an isolated instance. Jesus did this as a regular thing. Didn't he? When it came to sickness, turn to, uh, to Luke. And the uh, fourth chapter. He did the same thing. Let me read the whole passage. Luke 4, 32. Luke 4, 32. They were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with Power, and that's the word for authority. Luke 4.33. In the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil. He cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Can you see they are afraid? Hmm? They are afraid. They are afraid. Somebody said, well, yeah, but that's Jesus. <clears throat> How can we overcome this hundred, hundreds of years of wrong thinking? By the word of God. Yes, it's Jesus, but he's operating as a man. And the enemy is afraid of the authority he's walking in. The enemy is afraid of the anointing. The anointing. And see, you don't read about this kind of thing until after he came out in the power of the Spirit, after the Holy Ghost came upon him. What does the anointing do? Hmm? It destroys, destroys, destroys yokes. It removes burdens. Well, who is in the yoke-making business? Who's in the burden-building and loading business? Well, that's the enemy. And, and this anointing terrifies the enemy. They're scared of it. This anointing is in you and on you, and in me and on me. Can y'all stay with me a little bit longer tonight? Hmm? Can we get stirred up in this and believe it enough to act on it tonight? How about we put a stop to some stuff tonight? Huh? How about we act in the authority of Jesus' name? Let's do it. Well, we, we, it won't happen just getting tired and, you know, just wanting to leave and quit. But, but let's focus. Let's focus. Let's stay awake. Let's be here on kingdom business and let's say, I believe this, I believe this, I believe this, I believe this, and Lord, help my faith to get stronger every minute while I hear this, right? I'm hearing this, I'm receiving it, I believe it, I'm willing to act on it. Jesus, the Bible said they were amazed when, verse 36, they said, what a word this is, for with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits and they come out. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. They besought him for her. And he said, we need to have a prayer meeting. Huh? So is she really sick? Oh, yeah. Big fever. Well, then we've got to get a lot of people to pray hard. Somebody said, well, why say it like that? I don't like the way you say that. Well, I don't like the way you think about it. Who's your example? Centuries of church tradition or Jesus? Now, it is right to pray. It is right to pray. We've talked about it. We're going to talk about it. But study the Scriptures carefully, and you'll see it to be a rare thing that Jesus prayed about people being healed. You'll see again and again and again. What did he do? He exercised authority. He exercised dominion. Didn't he? Yes. Again and again and again. Yes. He lived prayed up. Yes. Didn't he? Yes. <laughs> he wasn't having to try to get ready when something came up. He was ready. Yes. We can be the same. Yes. By his help and grace, we can do the same. Yes. And when something came up, he didn't run and have a conference and, and put a committee together. He didn't call a prayer meeting. What did he do? He shut it down with the authority of words and the power of the Spirit. 
Has he told us to operate that way? Yes, he has. I said, yes, he has. I want us to turn to, to uh, three scriptures. I'm on a mission tonight. Can you help me? Yes. Ephesians. I wanted to share a couple of uh, uh, testimonies from Brother Hagin's life, my father in the faith, because there, there's such revelation in it, and uh, it, it illuminates this area that we're talking about tonight. He describes, he has a book called I Believe in Visions, and that and other books, he describes visitations that he had from the Lord. Now you have to decide whether you believe that or not, but I do. And we know it happened in the Bible, right? And God, the Lord's the head of the church. He can, he can do what he decides in those areas. But he said on one occasion, the Lord appeared to him. He said, I saw him just like I see you. And he said he was telling me some things, and I was so intense to get them. And he said a little imp-looking creature. He realized later it was, it was a demon. Somebody say little. <laughs> we, we get this picture of this great big fire breathing something, but most of them are just little ugly, annoying creatures. He said this little, he said kind of monkey looking, not, not monkey, but monkey like uh, imp, and said he came and just started jumping up, making noise, shrill, uh, yakety, yakety, yak, and putting out this uh, smoke screen. And he said he stood there, and the smoke's getting thicker and thicker. He can, he can barely see Jesus anymore. And all this screaming and shrill, he can hardly hear what Jesus is saying. And it's really irking him, and he's thinking, why don't Jesus make him stop? Why don't I, doesn't the Lord know I'm not getting everything he's saying? Why don't he make him stop? Why don't he make him stop? And Jesus just kept talking. Finally, he said, Shut up, I command you, stop that. And shut up and get out of the way. And so when he did, the thing just fell over to the side and just lay there like a little whip pup. And the smoke cleared up. And he said, the Lord looked at him and said, if you hadn't done something about that, I couldn't have. He said, Lord, I, I know I didn't understand you right I'm, I'm seeing you, I'm hearing this, but you didn't say if I didn't do something you couldn't have. You said you wouldn't have. The Lord said, no, you heard me. I said if you hadn't done something about that, I couldn't have. He said, no, 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 let's see. He, no, Lord, you didn't say you couldn't have. You said if I hadn't have done something about it, you wouldn't have. Isn't that what you said? He said, no, you heard me. I said if you hadn't have done something about it, I couldn't have. He said, well, Lord, I can't accept that. I know I'm seeing you. I know I'm having this vision. But unless you can show it to me in the scriptures, I can't accept that. That goes against everything I've ever heard in the churches I grew up in. To say you couldn't? He said, I'll, I'll give you three witnesses and one better. He gave him four scriptures through the Bible and showed him. You're at one of them right now, Ephesians. Ephesians 4. Verse 27. Are you there? What does it say? Neither give place to the devil. Who's understood subject? You are not to give place to the devil. The Amplified says, Leave no room or foothold for the devil. Somebody say, Give him no room. Give him no place, give him no room. Did the Lord tell you not to give him any room? Amen. Why didn't he tell you to pray that the Lord would make the devil stop? That's what religion teaches, doesn't it? That's not what the Bible told us to do. He told us not to give the enemy place, didn't he? Go to another one. Go to James, the fourth chapter. James 4, and 
and verse 7. James 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Submit yourselves to God, and He'll make the devil quit. What? Wonder how many Christians are praying, Oh God, make the devil quit. Oh God, stop the devil. Oh God, make him quit. Did he tell us to pray this way? Millions of people think he did. What did he say? Who's the understood subject right here? Huh? You, you resist the devil, and what? He'll flee from God. From us when we resist him because of what God has put on us that's from God. Right? But people are just try to leave it up to God. Oh God, make this cancer quit. Oh God, take this away from me. Oh God, make it stop. Make it quit. Do you see the revelation in this experience that Brother Hagin refers to? He said, this thing is jumping up and down. It's making all this noise. It's putting out this smoke screen, and it's just bothering. He's getting more aggravated every second, thinking, how many times do you have a visitation of the head of the church in your life? And I'm not getting what he's saying. He, he was just annoyed. He was getting frustrated. And he thought, why don't he do something? Why is he letting him do that? Finally, just almost out of desperation, he said, shut up, shut up in the name of Jesus. Quit, get out of here, quit. And he did. And Jesus said, if you hadn't done something about that, I couldn't have. Wow, how could that be true? Because the Lord has given us authority on the earth. We have a right to be here. These things are down here on the earth. If he's just going to intervene and, and make, you know, keep the devil from doing things in your life, he ought to do it for everybody else too. Right? Where does our will come in? Where does our authority come in? No, he's given us authority. Oh, can you see this? Can you see this? You resist the devil. Somebody said out loud. You resist the devil. Who? You. You resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Well, what if you don't do it? Well, I'm waiting on the Lord to do it. He didn't tell you to wait on him to do it. I'm praying that he would make the devil quit. He didn't tell you to pray that way. He told you to resist him, didn't he? Told you to do something about it. Told me to do something about it. Go to 1 Peter. We'll look at another one. Paul's a witness, James is a witness, Peter is a witness, right? Reading out the New Testament, aren't we? Hmm? Let's don't believe tradition instead of this. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, be on the watch, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour. Why, why would you need to be vigilant if there's nothing you can do about it? Right? Because he's seeking whom he may. That means there are those he may not. What determines those he may and those he may not? He gives it. Very, very next verse. Very next verse. Verse 9. How can you be sure you're one of the ones he may not devour? Whom resist? Who's going to resist him? You are. You are. I am. Resist him steadfast in the faith. Resist him. And what's going to happen? We just got through reading. When you resist him, when you stand against him, he will flee from you. He'll flee from you. Oh, we haven't majored on this. We haven't camped on this enough. We haven't thought about this enough. We've lived too much in the natural. We talk too much about the reports, too much about the symptoms, right? Too much about what we feel and what has happened and other people's experience. We've lived too much according to our senses and our feelings, not realizing there's a spiritual world. Huh? There is a devilish, uh, almost devilish energy in disease, isn't it? 
You can see it under the microscope, can't you? What makes it grow? What makes it develop? What makes it try to develop and choke the life out of a human being? It's not the life of God in there. Couldn't be. What is it? What is it? It's the enemy. I said it's the enemy. And it's not something for us to get super superstitious and spooky about. It's for us to get up and get adamant about and go, no, no, no. Not in my life. No, no. Not in my body. Not in my child. No. No. I've been given authority and power over all demons and over all disease. This is how Jesus operated, didn't he? Put it all together. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you'll see not just once or twice, not just a half a dozen times, again and again, he's casting out devils. He's casting out devils. He's rebuking sickness and disease. We're reading about Peter's mother-in-law. We didn't quite get down to the rest of it, but you know the story. He did the same thing he did with, with that fever that he did with that demon just a few verses back, didn't he? She had a great fever, and when they told him about it, he went in there. What did he do? He rebuked the fever. That's not the way most Christians think, do they? Y'all pray for me. For what? Well, that God would heal me and have mercy on me. But what about all these scriptures? Why don't we immediately jump up on both feet and say, fever, get out of here. Huh? Infection, get out of here. Disease, get out. Why don't we think like that? Oh, the devil hopes we don't find this out. He hopes we don't. He's tried to keep us in the dark. He's kept millions in the dark for centuries. But ah, too late, too late, too late, too late. Too late late you came to church and you opened your Bible and too late, too late, too late. (laughs) You know the good news. You know the gospel. You know the truth and it makes you free. Glory to God. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. It's no wonder so many people are down and so defeated and so upset and so confused because they're not in authority. They don't believe they have any authority. They believe they are helpless, hapless victims to this life. And the best we can do is beg God that he'd make it quit. I'm not making fun. I'm pointing out error. Did you hear me? And we've not been taught that we our kings and priests. We've not been taught, hallelujah, that we've been given authority in this name. And when the Holy Spirit came on us, it wasn't just so we could sit in a chair and go run, die, shun, die. (laughs) But so we could be empowered to look death and disease and confusion and bondage in the face and say, stop, I said stop. And stop now. And expect it to happen. And see it happen. We're going to put a stop to some stuff tonight in this place. And I'm going to get loud and you might as well get with me. Hmm? We're not waiting on God. We're not waiting on God for our victories. Jesus bought it and paid for it, and he's given it to us. But he's expecting us. He's instructed us what to do. He told us what to do. We're to rise up and speak to that mountain and command it to get out. Isn't that what he said? Get out. We're to stand up and resist anything that steals and kills and destroys. And say, not here. Not here you don't. Get Brother Smith Wigglesworth was said to, on one occasion, be standing at a train depot, and they're waiting on the train, and uh, the woman had, had a little dog that had followed her there from her apartment, and the, the, you know, they're waiting on the train to get there, and she said, no, no, honey, you can't go, now go back to the house, go back to the house, and he just stood there and wagged his tail and looked at her, and, and it was getting later, and the train's coming, she said, uh, no, 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 go on, go on. Go, go, go back to the house, go back, go back to the house. And he just stood there and wagged his tail and looked there. Finally, they could hear the the train coming down. She looked over and she said, get, get, get back to the house. And he took off and ran. And Brother Wigglesworth shouted out, that 
that's it. That's the same way you got to do the devil. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> it's not a matter of volume. It's not how loud we can get. That's not it. But it's do we mean it or not? Do we, do we believe it? And when you're real strong in your belief, it affects your volume some. Doesn't it? I think we've been too mealy mouth about stuff. I think we've been, you know, we've talked around it and about it and, you know, and we just played with it. And the devil knows it. He knows it. He knows we don't mean business. We got to get strong about this. We got to get serious about it. Like, do it like we mean it. Do it like we believe it. I want to read to you an excerpt from that book I mentioned just a bit ago. This I Believe in Visions, Brother Kenneth Hagin's book. Something that he learned that it goes right along with this. The Lord uh, ministered to him uh, the anointing to minister to the oppressed and the sick. And he, I, I'm, I'm saying this because this is in the previous chapter to what I'm reading. He, uh, he told him that when he sensed this anointing, it would mean that the work of the enemy was there and for him to command it to leave, and it would. And this has only been a month ago, a month or so before this time. Well, he's in a meeting, and this thing happened. I'm just going to read it to you. He said, My second vision of Jesus occurred about a month after the first. I was conducting a revival meeting in the state of Oklahoma. I told the congregation what the Lord had shown me about ministering to the sick and about the anointing in my hands. One night while I was ministering to the sick, a man in the healing line told me he had tuberculosis of the spine. He said he'd been through three clinics and all the doctors had given him the same, same diagnosis. He was beyond medical help at that time. The man's spine was as stiff as a board. In praying for him, I laid one hand on his chest and one hand on his back. When I did, the fire, the anointing, was jumping from hand to hand. I knew immediately that this, his body was oppressed by an evil spirit. Let's just stop right here. Is that something to be afraid of? No. What is it something to, to do Take authority over it, right? Run it out. Don't get spooky. Don't get, don't get afraid at all. Jesus has conquered. And he said, I commanded the spirit. I said, you foul spirit that oppresses this man, man's body, I command you to come out of his body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I made a terrible mistake. I got into unbelief. He said, it's easy to get into unbelief no matter who you are. And not even realize it. He said, I said to the man, see if you can stoop over and bend your back. Try to touch your toes. Anybody hear the unbelief? Where do you hear it? See if. Now, now let's just stop right here and examine this. What, what, what does if mean? You may not be able to. Right? It might not have worked. Try to do it. That's one thing I really dislike about some of these modern translations. Some of these modern, they're, they're not really translations, they're paraphrases. And they'll say, the Lord's telling you, try to do this, or the Spirit of God through Paul in the epistles, try. The Bible never told you to try to do anything. That would imply God might not know where you could do it or not. He knew before he told you to do it, if you could do it. Right? He said, bend over. Try, see if. And uh, he said, the word if is the badge of doubt. When I said, see if you can, that was doubt. God will put up with a certain amount of doubt in a young Christian who doesn't know any better. But when one is enlightened in God's word, the Lord won't let him get by with it. The man tried to bend over, but he couldn't. His back was as stiff as ever. I laid my hands upon him again. One hand on his chest, one hand on his back. I felt the fire. Again, I commanded, you foul spirit that oppresses this man's body, I command you to come out of him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, I said to the man, see if you can bend, stoop over and bend, bend your back and touch your toes. His back was as immovable as before because I'm acting in unbelief and didn't realize it. I said, well, we'll try it again which is unbelief too. I laid one hand on his chest and the other on his back. Again, I had the same manifestation of anointing in my hands. For the third time, I said, 
you foul spirit that oppresses this man's body, I command you to come out of him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's just stop right here. A whole lot of so-called educated people would think this is foolishness. Wouldn't they? Well, a man has a physical condition. It's been diagnosed. It's clinical. Wonder what you could have said about all the people Jesus ministered to. Huh? The woman with the issue of blood had spent every dime she had on doctors. And not, not, nothing against the doctors. They just couldn't help her. Don't you suppose they had all kind of reports? Diagnosis? Prognosis? You can choose to only live in the natural. And be oblivious to the sources and causes and roots of things. Or you can get in the ditch on the other side and be afraid. Anybody says something about a demon or an evil spirit? Or you can get in the middle of the high road. <laughs> and realize the devil's behind everything that steals, kills, and destroys. But never fear, you've been given authority. Right? And you've been given power and authority over all unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And then you can use it. But now let's just stop right here. Somebody said, well, I tried that. I tried it. Well, he did too. Jesus' own disciples tried it one time. Remember that? The man with the lunatic son? He got him set free, and they said, why couldn't we cast him out? And he said, because of your unbelief. Another place it said this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. It doesn't, you know, fasting doesn't give you more authority. It just helps you get out of the flesh and get in the spirit. Are you with me now? So somebody said, I tried that and it didn't work. No, nah, it tried you and you failed. Doesn't change the fact that you still got authority. Don't look back, stir yourself up. Say, so this time I'm going to do it in faith. This time I'm going to do it in confidence, right? This time I'm not going to be wavering. So he told the man the third time and the man, he said, now see if you can stoop over, see if you can bend down. He couldn't. I gave up, and I went to pray for the next person. Now, let's just stop right here. Does that mean it wasn't God's will to heal this man? Absolutely not. The man walked back down the aisle. I'm standing on the platform about three feet to the right of the pulpit. As the next person stepped up to be prayed for, I looked to my left for some reason, and I saw Jesus standing there as plainly as any man I've ever seen in my life. I thought everybody saw him. But I learned later nobody in the congregation saw him or heard him except me. The congregation heard what I said, but they didn't see or hear anyone else. Jesus was standing beside the pulpit. I could have reached out and touched him. He pointed his finger at me. And he said, I said, in my name, the demon or demons will leave. Lord, I said, I know you said that. It's only been a month since you appeared to me in Rockwall, Texas, and you told me to command the demon or demons to come out in your name. I told the demon to come out of that man, but he didn't. <laughs> Again, Jesus pointed his finger at me. He said, I said, in my name, call out the demons and they will leave the body. I know you said that, Lord. And I commanded the Spirit to leave this man's body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he didn't go. Jesus put his finger in my face and said for the third time, I said, in my name, the demons will go. Call them out in my name and they'll leave the body in my name. Weekly, I replied. <laughs> he said, Lord, I know you said that. It happened just a month ago. It's as fresh in my mind as if you said it last night. I know what you told me. And I did tell that demon to leave that man's body. But he didn't go. I think I know how Jesus looked when he drove the money changers out of the temple. <laughs> 
as recorded in the 11th chapter of Mark's gospel. Suddenly, it seemed as if his eyes shot fire. I could see flashes of lightning in them. The fourth time, he jabbed his finger at me and said emphatically, Yes! But I said they would. That's right. Yes, yes. Then he disappeared. I realized then I had acted in unbelief. Oh, friends, do you get this? Do you hear this? Somebody said, I said it. I said it. And it didn't happen. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that you don't have authority. It doesn't mean it's not the will of God. Hmm? See, millions of people don't even believe this. It's up to the Lord. Whatever he wants. And let's just beg God to make the devil quit. He said, uh, sometimes we think if we got a special gift or anointing to ministry, it'll always work. But that's not the case. No matter how much authority we might have, no matter how many special gifts we might have, no matter how much power we might possess, it works by faith. And faith only. When I realized I had exercised doubt instead of faith, I saw my mistake. I called the man to come back to the platform. He was standing at the rear of the auditorium and hadn't gone back to his seat yet. I pointed to him and said, come back up here, brother, come here. He retraced his steps back up the aisle. I stood on the platform waiting for him to come around to the altar to where I was. The instant he stood before me, I slapped him on the back and my other hand on his chest. I said, Satan, I told you to leave this body and out you go in the name of the Lord Jesus. When I said it to the man, I said, now, my brother, and I didn't put an if this time, stoop over and touch your toes. Instantly, his back was limber. The tuberculosis of the spine was gone. The spine that had been as stiff as a board was healed. He could stoop over and touch his toes as well as any normal person completely well. Because this man had come to our meeting from Arkansas, we didn't see him until two weeks later. He came back to be in the last Saturday night service. I asked him if he's still able to stoop over and touch his toes. He said, yes, I'm free still. And with a big smile, he stooped over him and touched his toes and went through several exercises to prove he was still limber and free. The experience demonstrated to me once and for all the importance of following God's word explicitly. And I learned that no matter who we are, if we move in unbelief, we'll stop the flow of God's power. We must believe we have authority. We must believe we are empowered. And we must do it without doubting. We must do it without wavering. Do you believe this? Do you have authority? Have you been given power in the name of Jesus? I mean, think about what we call the Great Commission. We say, somebody said, well, that was just Jesus. No, he gave power to the twelve. Well, it was just the 12. No, he gave power to 70. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, it was just them. No, all through the book of Acts. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but it was just them. No, what does the Great Commission say? Go to, go to Mark real quickly. Mark 16. Let's remind ourselves. I mean, every Christian believes in the Great Commission, don't they? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Certainly they do. What's the Great Commission? Go into all the world. Do what? Preach, proclaim the good news to every creature. You find Mark 16? Mark 16, verse 15. Go you into all the world. Who's going to do it? Us. Preach the gospel to every creature. Who's going to do the preaching? Us. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that believes not will be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. What's the first thing he mentions? Huh? Is this just for Jesus? No, this is them that believe in my name. It's right in the middle of the Great Commission. Just for the 12? No. Just for the 70? No. Just for Paul in the book of Acts? No, no, no. In my name shall they, they, they cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. Anybody tongue talkers in here? Yes. Well, you ought to be devil caster outers too. And you don't have to get spooky. You don't have to get superstitious. You don't have to get fearful. You don't have to get weird at all. Hmm? 
Someone said, what if I don't see anything? Is it stealing? Is it killing? Is it destroying? It's the devil. I said, it's the devil. You got a right to shut it down. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it'll not hurt them. We have one example of the, the serpent deal, and that was when Paul got bit. He wasn't handling them to prove he had faith. He was obeying God and got bit. And no matter what, I mean, this applies to us in so many ways. Uh, there's enough stuff in the air, in the water, in the food we eat to kill us any, any day. Say that loud. If I eat any, dead, eat any deadly thing, drink any deadly thing, breathe any deadly thing, it won't hurt me. They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Who's going to do that? Us. We're going to preach the gospel. We're going to speak in new tongues. We cast out devils. We lay hands on the sick. Oh, do you see it? Do you see it? And we're not to do it mealy mouth and let's try and let's see if and do the best that we can. No, no. Jesus said, I said he would. Then they will. Stand on your feet. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's lift up our voice. Let's begin to pray in the Spirit. Let's begin to pray in the Spirit. Oshtumunkale flamonde badashti. Eflem babande on dos non do colochi. Eflem mambade for mombera and broads no mortecasti. Oh, si de leveche. 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 Si delle vecchie, oh, son come la fame, emble ma son gonde va male, vlombo de vombe, le vlombo da viele, ambe govonde bande balle, vlombo gonde vanne bleve, ne vande bande bari va doi occhi, e ve go bande o no, son de la do, de la do, de la do, oh, so ve le blema gavande balong de gorombe le lemba redotte, O vle ba ya do ve lo be va le do de lo be da le do ve lo mblo vo mo moshe. O sate ba la do chikoti, sate ba le do chikoti, sate ba le do chikototi. O ho shokte, o ho shokte, o ho shok. Oh, oh, shokte. Do, oh, shokte. Do, shokte. Hallelujah. Now, listen up. Listen up. We're going to act on this authority. Everybody shut your eyes and just stay focused on, on. It's not the flesh. It's not the natural. It's not our sweat. It's not our yelling and screaming. It's our faith from our insides. People in this room, people watching by the internet, people watching by TV, people that will watch this DVD and, and, and hear these recordings. We've allowed stuff we shouldn't have allowed. We've yielded to it. Didn't mean to, didn't want to, but thought we didn't have a choice. Thought we couldn't help it. Thought we are just victims. Waiting on the Lord. Waiting on Him. Waiting on Him. Pleading with Him. Begging Him. And so many times good people love God just ignorant, doing it ignorantly, ignorant of the Bible, ignorant of our authority. But everybody said out loud, in light of God's Word, in light of God's word that, I see tonight, that I see tonight, I am not a victim. I am not helpless. I have authority. I have power. In Jesus, name, in Jesus' name, over all demons, over all demons to, cast to cast them out, over all sickness, over all, sickness, over all, disease, over all disease, 
I've been given authority. I've been given power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Conde. Now we're going to act on it. We're going to act on it right now. And I want you to reach down to your toes. I want you to reach down in your spirit. Don't you be afraid of getting too loud. I want you to mean business on this. We are running these things out in the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Are you ready? People watching by TV or internet, stand up on your feet if you're able to. Get up on your feet right now and get serious about this. Don't you be doing anything else. Turn everything else off. This is serious. We're taking care of business right now in the name of Jesus. Now stand up on your feet. Everybody, close your eyes again. Say it out loud. In the name of Jesus, the head of the church, you foul spirits, you unclean spirits, Oppressing bodies, oppressing, bodies. oppressing, minds. oppressing minds, spirit of death, spirit of, death. Spirit of, infirmity. Spirit of infirmity, I command you, I command you. Get. 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 Get, out. get out, I rebuke you, I rebuke. leave the body, leave my body, leave my mind, I rebuke you. Go in the name of Jesus. Hoti Pinishi, Hoto Badonsi, Andi Badani, Andi Badono, Andi Badono, Andi Badono, Andi Badono, Andi Badono. Andi Badone. Andi Badone. Andi Badone. De Malasoto. We don't care what you want. Kosh de Balang de Vondongo Lombain de la Nande Balachi. Bez de Vododje go Lope de Flesi. Baron Bramance Fongos in Mandachi. Seca de l'ofoto, bela blemenze, ben de banoso, ben de banoso, ben de banoso. Now Jesus rebuked demons, he also rebuked disease, didn't he? So everybody, say it for yourself or say it with somebody, say it out loud. Disease, Disease. cancer. AIDS, AIDS. Heart, problems. heart problems, blood problems, blood problems. Every, disease. every disease, every sickness. Every sickness. I, rebuke I rebuke you. You stop it. You stop, it. You stop, now. You stop now. Get out of my body. Leave my body. Be gone. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now what happens when we do this? Huh? Come on, that's too slow and too weak. What happens when we do this? They go. They, he told us resist him and he flees. Well, what if it don't work? No if, no if, no if. No if. Well, I'm trying. No, don't try. Do. 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 It's not, it's not in your ability to make it happen. It's in your faith. Just, just your faith. Just your faith. Now, uh, we see both things. We see authority exercised over demons and disease, and we see laying on of hands. This healing is good. Healing comes from God. Right? Uh, so if something has been damaged by these wrong spirits, by this disease, then we can ask God to make that whole. Right? And make it strong. Of course, if you don't get rid of what's causing the problem, it just gets that way again. But we just ran it off. 
I said, we just now ran it off. Didn't we? We ran it off. Ran it out. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory. Let's thank God a little while. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, if you've been attacked in your body and you've had some damage and you'd like to believe God for the restoration and healing of that, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Now, where's the person? Have them come up. Have the ushers have them come up right now. Okay, look around. If somebody's got their hand up next to you, then I want you uh, to reach over, put your hand on their shoulder. The Bible said believers would lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Isn't that what he said? These signs would follow them that believe. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We just rebuked that stuff, didn't we? And it, it has to go. Glory to God. And so now we're going to believe God for the restoration and healing. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you that the disease has been rebuked. We thank you that the death has been rebuked. And now we ask you, let your anointing come in to make whole what has been damaged. Let the power of God, the anointing, come in to make whole and to make strong what has been damaged. Be made completely whole. Be made strong and healed and whole in Jesus' holy name. Glory to God. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Ondo bonosto palacete. O flabanza na mante falombonje. Believe that healing power comes into the bodies right now to affect a healing and a cure. What has been damaged in Jesus' holy name. Oh, Toma, everybody say, I believe I receive. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. Oh, Shoshonta. Come on, praise the Lord a little bit. Oh, Vlaman Banenon's gone the Lok Shote. Ever the mess gone the band the man the barra brova domoshi. Ele Blaman son con Vlaman de Balan Bloma Susu. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let, the, let your anointing saturate these cloths. In the name of Jesus. 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 Let your anointing. In the name of Jesus. 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 Saturate these cloths. And when they come in contact with the oppressed, let that anointing come into them and on them and drive out every demon and drive out every sickness and every disease and affect a healing and a cure in them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. To your glory. Tiko la masa. Tiko la masa. Tiko la masa. Tiko la masa. Oh, say to live up, believe out the cover, the baby, she shook the door, believe the boy, November, and brown, and so so to me. Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Somebody say, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. In Jesus' name. The devil has no place in me. 
No room in me. No foothold in me. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to get miracle testimonies out of this night tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, we're going to glorify the Lord. What if the thing tries to come back? Huh? Tomorrow or next week? Or what if you're free from it for five years and it tries to come back? Huh? I said, oh, oh, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. What if it tries to come back? Same thing that got you free the first time, keep you free, right? Same thing. Remember Brother Smith Wigglesworth? Huh? What did that woman say? Get, get. Somebody says, is all that really necessary? Do you want results or not? It's not in volume. It's not in sweat. It is in faith. Absolute confidence. Absolute boldness. Being sure. Right? No ifs. No ifs. No ands. No buts. No whatabouts. Did you get a picture? Jesus said to Brother Hagin the last time, did you get that picture? Huh? I got a picture. What did he say? I know you said that. And I did, but he didn't. Yes, I said he would. Who are we going to believe? Then that's it. I said, that's it. That's it. We have authority. We have power over all demons, over all disease. And we give the devil no place. Let's sing in the name of Jesus, I have authority. Y'all know that? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I have authority over every sickness, oh, thank over you, Lord. every disease, oh, over praise. every demon, Hallelujah. all of the enemy. Oh, In the name of Jesus, I have authority. In the name of Jesus, I have authority over every sickness, over every disease, over every demon, all of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, I have authority. Hallelujah. We're going to keep singing that as we go. Just sing it again and again. If you're here tonight and you're not sure about your salvation, don't go out the back. Come down to the front. There'll be people standing here ready to talk to you, ready to pray with you. You need to know that you know so you know you've got this authority we're talking about, that you're in the family. But keep saying it. Keep singing it tonight. Get up saying it, singing in the morning. In the name of Jesus, I have authority. Let's sing it as we go. In the name of Jesus. 